Facebook Road is blowing up search engines. At its peak, searches were up over 3,000% after Gawker's Adrian Chen broke the news of the eBay-like black market website. Only accessible through Tor software that makes users anonymous online, Silk Road is an underground website where users can buy illegal drugs, among other things, a fact that has politicians screaming for government intervention. But the most fascinating part of this story isn't just the availability of illegal drugs online. It's how people are paying for them. They're called Bitcoins, a new form of encrypted virtual currency currently trading at $18.80 per Bitcoin. And with over 6.2 million of them in the market right now, that equates to over $160 million of wealth. The future of this virtual currency is the subject of our real-time conversation. Joining us from Raleigh, North Carolina, is Bitcoin project developer and the founder of Bitcoin Watch, Jeff Garzik. Jeff, how are you? Doing just fine, thanks. You're in your room, your developer room, I see. <laughs> There's a lot of computers around. So this is a pretty complicated concept. How do Bitcoins work exactly? Well, uh, thanks for having me on your show. Bitcoins are uh, definitely a complex concept. They are a decentralized electronic currency with no central bank. And uh, the way they work, the way that it's secured is through peer-to-peer -peer technology. You have uh, multiple computers on the internet, uh, easily uh, probably over 100,000 at this point, uh, collectively working to verify Bitcoin transactions on the internet. So it's a shared trust type so, of... I mean, that seems a bit idealistic. Like you just come up with your own currency. Is that how it works? How do we actually trust the credibility of this? Well, uh, at this point, uh, it's the verification network is more powerful than the world's largest supercomputers. And so you have much more uh, technology developed, uh, dedicated to securing the technology than you do uh, protein folding or working to analyze nuclear tests at Lawrence Livermore Laboratory or any of the other supercomputing so tasks. So we're supposed to trust that it works and no one's getting taken advantage that if I buy a Bitcoin from you that it's a real Bitcoin is this actually the currency itself anonymous well uh, one of the uh, reasons why uh, Bitcoins are so popular is because you don't have to trust what I say what <laughs> what he claims that anyone makes because Bitcoins are fully open source okay. you can review the entire code you can review the public transaction ledger, which is uh, every single Bitcoin transaction is stored on the web for everyone to see. That's how we prevent counterfeiting. And so uh, this week with uh, uh, Silk Road uh, headline making uh, news and uh, some of the other stories, uh, we've really been uh, issuing corrections madly left and right to uh, journalists and politicians alike that uh, when they claim that Bitcoins are anonymous or untraceable, in fact, the opposite is true. It's uh, imminently traceable. It's uh, every single Bitcoin user has a copy of this public Bitcoin ledger on their computer. So That's I just say, wait, so the Bitcoins, they've gone from an exchange rate of 75 cents in April to over $18 now. That's a huge leap. Is that because of Silk Road? And what do you feel about you being now associated with a site like Silk Road, which is selling guns and drugs online and enabling that? Well, we're uh, pushing back on that pretty hard. This is mainly, uh, in, our, in our humble opinion, this is more about uh, kids hopping onto a new technology without fully thinking it through. It's uh, fairly easy for law enforcement to get a court order and look at your ISP logs or look at other details of your computing history, which can tie you to a Bitcoin transaction. And so uh, uh, it's pretty bleeping, pretty bleeping dumb to do a lot of illegal transactions on Bitcoin when it's so easily traceable. The authorities already trace uh, anonymous prepaid Visa debit cards and anonymous prepaid so phones. Which, yeah, so, Nick has a question here. So I have a question. So if it is traceable, um, you know, Lulzak said that they got $7,000 worth of Bitcoins um, donations. 
um, how can the government not trace who sent them and the guys who are receiving them and, and, and you know, track them down? Well, they can uh, by the methods just described. That's why I say they're, they're basically dumb kids that didn't think this through. <laughs> the, uh, they can, everyone can go to blockexplore.com and view every single Bitcoin transaction. And who's that's actually going to do that? A real consumer. I mean, this is obviously for people who get code. I mean, and I Not get this. That, I'm, but the what? opportunity to mask your identity and your location based on what Kevin was telling us about how to get a prepaid card yeah. and how to get a prepaid cell phone and, and set up these accounts also. and yeah. yeah. We have a question from yeah, so the What's Trending community, actually. No worse than any of those other methods. So wait, yeah. we just Jeff yeah. have a question uh, from Jacked the community. Jacked Up 721 would like to know what happens when the Bitcoin market drops. Then everyone's Bitcoins lose value. Uh, it's rocketed up, uh, as I believe it was Shira just pointed out. And uh, boy, it, uh, it can either go one of two ways. Either uh, it's going to go way back down because it's a bubble or it's going to stay where it is because, as uh, I believe, uh, Bitcoins are really a worldwide currency and we're coming up to the level at which Bitcoins will be stable. If, really? uh, well, if so you consider that uh, you're just now at the very start of a startup currency yeah. and uh, many, many more people worldwide will want to hold Bitcoins, then uh, they're pretty undervalued. Now, Nick, is this, and Kevin, you can answer this, is this the future of money or is this an illegal enterprise, all of this? Neither. Uh, Neither. Really. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's just, a, it's another currency online. I think it's, it's you know, it's not, it doesn't, re I mean, in some respects it replaces cash and value um, of, of certain commodities, but at the same time it's, it's just another way of transactions and you see other transactions where people trade uh, products and, and services rather than mm -hmm. actual cash and I think this is just another one of uh, another value in that respect. But you have Senator, Senator Chuck Schumer is actually saying Bitcoin is basically money laundering. How do you react to that and are you worried about the government shutting you down, Kevin? No, oh, Jeff. Um, we're actually uh, working with the government to register Bitcoin exchanges as MSBs or money service businesses to make sure that uh, the government, the long arm of the government can indeed reach uh, Bitcoin. Because in my humble opinion, and uh, a lot of uh, Bitcoiners are diehard Ron Paul libertarians who might not necessarily agree with me, but the only way Bitcoins are gonna be successful is working with regulation and with the government. And so that's what we've been doing specifically with the Bitcoin exchanges, that's where you change US dollars or euros to bitcoins and back again is all of those are fully registered with the government fully uh, complying with all the anti money laundering and know your client laws and uh, basically uh, it's it's a problem that uh, cash can always be used for good or evil just like US dollars but we hope to uh, tip the scales in favor of the good guys so where PayPal, there'll be a link to Bitcoin if you want to transfer Bitcoins instead of your credit card in the future. Oh, in the future, uh, PayPal and credit cards will be denominated in Bitcoins in addition to U.S. dollars. Interesting. Well, this is an incredibly fascinating story. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And of course, all of you can find out more. Just go to Bitcoin.org.